Uh, well, the more popular or the more mainstream the source, the worse they've been to me in the film. Uh, but if you go to the press page on the redpillmovie.com, we have the good, the bad, and, not, and the ugly, uh, and all the press links. And there's far more good than there is bad and ugly. Uh, but the good is not necessarily all mainstream. I mean, it's bloggers and you know, or kind of fringe film reviewers, and the more mainstream uh, articles written about the film, whether it's from Vice, uh, The Guardian, <laughs> BBC. Uh, gosh, who else? I, I mean, there are some pretty. Uh, Village Voice was the one that set the script on what the mainstream media should say about this film and about me. Uh, that was, now I've learned that that is a mainstream media tactic is for uh, someone high up on the food chain to be the first to write the script and everyone will follow suit and quote that first article. And The Village Voice by Alan Scherstel, his film review, which was a rant and not a film review, uh, set, you know, gave the talking points for all the other mainstream media reviewers or, or critics. And also the petitions on change.org that were in Australia to influence Dendi or Palace Cinemas to pull their screenings, uh, those petitions also cited this Village Voice article and his misinformation about this film, this blatant lies about the film. Uh, so, you know, I really snowballed and spun out of control and you know as an independent filmmaker there's you know I work out of my house there's not some big studio production with you know 50 employees it's myself and my assistant that gives me maybe 10 hours a week of working with me and you know we don't have a publicist that's a whole nother story but uh, a lot of people that I've tried to hire on this project walked away um, because you know it would eventually show that they were feminist leaning and they couldn't get behind the project and, and would drag their heels and, and wouldn't do the work for me. Uh, so you know it's been a really you know grassroots effort on on our part to get this film out there, uh, and I'm so grateful to our distributor who had the guts and wasn't uh, you know having to do what, what the mainstream media or, or big Hollywood moguls tell them to do. They chose to take a chance on this film and that's why we have it on iTunes, Amazon, Hulu, everywhere else. Uh, but yeah, it's the me I think the media is the source of a lot of these problems. Uh, because I after making the red pill I, I it really turned my world upside down with it. everything I thought I knew to be true and, and how I saw the world uh, is now uprooted. So uh, including my, you know, liberal leanings, uh, I, I still am a registered Democrat, but, um, you know, this year in particular with the election and, and also working on finishing the red pill and realizing how often the liberal media twisted my words and my story and tried to, you know, make me into the monster that I saw them making the men's rights activists into, which, you know, I'm not a men's rights activist today. I don't, I don't call myself an MRA. I'm a filmmaker that made a film about men's rights activists. Uh, but, you know, just for doing that and, and not making a hit piece on MRAs, uh, liberal media and my liberal friends have really, uh, you know, drawn a line in the sand and said, you're not with us, you're now against us. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I am extremely frustrated with <laughs> liberals and Democrats. And, um, and I, I think I'm even more uh, upset because when, when you are a part of a family or a group or a tribe that you have been, you know, fighting for and fighting with for so long, uh, you have a certain level of expectation and, uh, it, you, you hold your, your own tribe to, you know, a standard of excellence and, and integrity and truth. And, uh, and so it's, it's been disappointing when I realize that they're not standing for truth and integrity and, um, so, yeah, I, I don't know where I, I stand now. I haven't accepted a new label uh, just because I've dropped a few. Um, that's another thing with uh, 
making this film, and I don't think it's any uh, secret anymore that after making the red pill, I have dropped the label of feminist. Uh, and what I would hear from my feminist friends and family members is, uh, they would call me after seeing the film and saying, how could you drop the label? Why are you not a feminist anymore? So so what, you don't care about women's rights? You don't care about reproductive rights? You don't care about X, Y, Z? And and I, I, I find it really fascinating that just dropping a, a label of feminist would people now think that I'm anti-women or promote violence against women or anything like that, which couldn't be further from the truth. I'll always support women's rights and empowering girls and women and, you know, I... Uh, but when you do take on a label that does have political implications and, and actions uh, throughout history to say, well, this is what feminists have done, and they have fought against joint custody, and they have uh, fought against including boys as victims of rape, and they have fought, they fought against all these things that I would think are gender equality issues, and I am truly for gender equality, and and human rights in general. And so how could I be a part of a, a group that is, is not uh, walking what they preach? And, um, but yeah, so I kind of went on to feminist after talking about liberals, but yeah, uh, I, I just want to see, uh, I, I want to see people really uh, stand up for, for, uh, what I, I think are good virtues, like human. I'm sorry, my cat's playing with a rock right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I I don't know where what territory is standing up for all humans' rights right now, and and wanting to uh, protect rights and also fight for for rights that need to be upheld. I uh, well. I think uh, that there's a lot of industries making a lot of money off of the idea that women are disadvantaged and uh, and to keep that, I guess for lack of a better word, trade going is more beneficial to organizations like, oh gosh, I'm really going to get attacked for saying this, uh, <laughs> but organizations like Ms. and Jezebel and uh, the Commission for Women and Girls and uh, a, any kind of, well, the domestic violence industry for women's shelters, uh, apparently one, uh, over $1 billion industry, violence against women. Uh, so there's a lot of money exchanging hands on the idea that women are disadvantaged. And, um, and if you add men to that equation, then it's no longer a gender issue. It's a human issue that just like hunger. Uh, where there are people who are suffering, and uh, and apparently that doesn't have uh, as easy of, of a marketing strategy to just say all all people suffer violence when when they're or many people suffer violence when they're children or in relationships or uh, with the the roles that they're expected to live out to have a family. Uh, if all people suffer, then uh, I mean, it's it's kind of like we'll get in line with all the other <laughs> issues that there are to uh, donate to and, and fund. Uh, but if if it's just one gender and it's women and and it's this image of you know like domestic violence posters of women cowering with a, a black eye, it's a very uh, powerful image where it gets a visceral reaction out of especially men uh, to see a hurting woman. Oh, woman who is abused uh so uh, yeah there's a, there's a lot of money in this and i uh, something that I, I think is good for anyone to ask themselves about feminism is uh when will they achieve what they're seeking out to achieve and what would that look like and uh because if you do talk to a lot of feminists and, and what their uh their issues are and what they're saying that they want um a lot of it wouldn't really work in an effect, and uh, or if it's something that you can never achieve. And you know, we always hear like the women have it all, that women can't have it all. And and but uh, apparently, it's also a form of oppression, saying that women could uh, be an amazing mother and housewife, and also have this amazing career. And now this is putting even more pressure on women to uh, do it all and have it all, and that's unachievable. 
I, I'm, I'm still not sure if feminism is for women having it all or, or like saying that that's oppressing women to say they can have it all. I, I haven't figured out where their stance is on that one. But, um, but it's uh, basically there's, there's no perfect world in feminist eyes of, of how gender should be treated. Uh, but, you know, some of the, the, some of the things that I've, I've been seeing them say that they do like is really concerning. For instance, uh, there was a documentary I think came out last year. I forget the name of it. I'm sorry. But it was about a woman in New York who uh, was in her 40s and never married, never had kids, and she really wanted to have a child, but she didn't have a man in her life. So the whole documentary is about her going to a sperm uh, donor and having a child on her own. And so then she interviews all these other women who had children on their own. And the dating pool in New York is all these single women to very few single men. And so there's apparently this growing movement of women having uh, children through sperm donors. And, and, and the documentary was really, it was like a women empowerment film saying that we don't need a man, we can have our own child and a career and a family on our own with our friends to help raise them or whatever. But, uh, but really it was, uh, the, the message was you don't need a man. And, but it's also saying children don't need a, need a father. Mm. And, uh, and you know, it was a film that was revered in feminist circles. And, uh, so I, I think we need to look at all of this and, and talk about this discussion of what is the perfect world regarding genders and equality. And, and a lot of men's rights activists say that gender role, uh, fluidity is important so to, to allow equal opportunity for fathers to be a stay-at-home dad or uh to not be the only breadwinner or have uh that kind of responsibility on solely the, their shoulders uh so men's rights activists are about wanting to see both gender roles be malleable but uh but we also, Aaron Pizzi talks a lot about what, what do children need? And it, Aaron Pizzi was the founder of the First Women's Shelter. And, and she talks a lot about how uh, there is a destruction of the family kind of happening with, uh, with partly the way that we're trying to remove fathers from the equation. Uh, but also, you know, just uh, with this whole female empowerment uh, dialogue that's happening right now or it has been happening for a really good strong five years i would say in the past five years it's been at least in my news feeds it's it's all covered in my facebook feeds and twitter is is about uplifting girls and women and uh to the point where you're willing to step over men and make fun of them and not see the the gender hypocrisy in that uh so i i i think you know the best solution right now for where we can head with gender equality is shining light on the hypocrisy and the double standards. Uh, and if, if we educate, especially young people more about, uh, the evolution of gender roles, why they were in place that, uh, not to demonize all men saying that they, you know, created this horrible world for, for women to live in that, that was under their thumb and, and that kept them in the kitchen without rights. Uh, that's, that's not a true, uh, you know, gender studies <laughs> classroom to talk about the genders. We, we need to look at what, what men went through, historically speaking, and, and their provider and protector role and what that meant and how that wasn't, you know, patriarchal privilege to be drafted to war and to, uh, you know, have, have no, uh, even still today, not have uh, rights to your own child, whether it's the right to know that you have a child there are men who, when the child turns 18, then they're told, oh, by the way, that 18 year old is yours and you owe me now 18 years of child support. No repercussions or accountability for the woman lying for that long. Uh, you know, there's just, it, but all of those gender issues that affect men are completely ignored from the discussion.